everyone, hope you're all having a great weekend. I've been requested to make a video that's going over options to simplify everything, and I'm gonna try to attempt to do that right now. Now, keep in mind, that's what I've been attempting to do for the last seven or eight months. The problem is, is all of the bullshit out there that everyone's concerned about that means absolutely nothing when it comes to you, your money, and the charts you're looking at, and the contracts you're purchasing, and the decisions and the patience you must have while holding options. Now, if you don't understand options, it's number one, likely because you're overthinking it, number two, you're listening to other people who are overcomplicating it, or you're listening to idiots who don't know how it works, or you just don't have any experience trading options. There's nothing wrong with any of those things, just be wary of listening to others who, number one, don't have the track record to prove that they know how to trade options, and two, feed you, uh, you know, hype, hope, all that good shit. What you want is consistent approach, consistent mindset, and consistent results, which is all very, very possible right now in this, in this market environment with a, you know, <laughs> all-time high repo, and that's, that's an understatement. There's nothing even comparable in, in history, but there's record cash in the system. There's no, no surprise here. Inflation's at record highs, but it seems that no one knows the source of the inflation, but that doesn't matter. Because all that matters is what we're doing with our position in the market. Nothing else matters. Now, when it comes to options themselves, fuck everything else but calls and puts for the time being until you grasp this concept. Calls. Price go up, you want to buy calls. Price go down, you want to buy puts. Now, how do you know where the fuck the price is going to go? That's where the only indicator in the market right now that you need comes into play. And that's called the relative strength index, which is basically an average of, of dollar cost of participants in the market. Now, we, the 14 days is the, is the standard, which is what we will be using in this demonstration and that we trade off of in the group. It is the easiest way to see profit and the only thing that will get in your way is yourself. And it, I, trust me, I used to be in the same way. It's, it's hard to do it. It's hard to get out of your own way. It really is. But what I wanted you to do is look at this RSI with me. Just pick a random stock. We're looking at Sierra Oncology. doesn't matter. So let's just take a look. What happens? And by the way, RSI, the way it works, is up here, there's, there's two lines. You see a dotted yellow line on the top and the bottom. What the top represents is the overbought marker. The bottom line represents the oversold marker. Any time that the stock RSI goes below the 30 or above the 70, that is when you buy in the respective direction. So for example, if you buy puts right here and you sell puts right here, that's a big win. Now, what our group does specifically we, we like to exploit this very narrow correction here. Now, could you hold in the money for longer, a few months out? Absolutely. If you don't have a lot of time to trade intraday to hit these quick corrections that we're doing, then buy a few months out. It doesn't matter, you know, it, it doesn't matter when you buy the contract for because it's going to correct. It's going, it, it does every time. Every time that the RSI goes up to overbought, it trends down. Every single time, no matter what. The only thing you don't know is how much. Is it going to be a full run down to the bottom oversold? Who knows? And the other thing you don't know is the time it's going to take for it to do it. Now, that is where in the money comes into handy or comes in handy. Looking at this options chart, what do you notice? There's not a lot of strike prices. Why is that? because this is a weekly, or this is a non-weekly option. Now, if we go and we look at SPY, it's a whole different fucking story because there's tons of liquidity and it's a you know daily option. If you go to GME, different. It's more strikes because it's a weekly option. You have dailies, weeklies, monthlies, quarterlies. Now, the illiquid are monthly. Not weekly, not daily. That is why when you go to our core plays, 
which I'm going to give everyone a freebie here today. Fold. That's the one we're going to play on Monday, or I'm going to play on Monday. Why? Well, several reasons. IV's low. But most importantly, the fucking RSI is overbought. And what do we know about RSIs that are overbought? They come down. What do we know about movement when it's going down? If we buy puts during that time when the stock's moving down, you will make money, especially if you're in the money. Now, this is when it comes back to what I was going to say earlier. In the money versus out of the money. Yes, I understand. Out of the money calls and puts are cheaper, but they're cheaper for a reason. On the other end of that trade, the person that wrote that contract, the person that understands level one options, the one that most people skip over, is selling you that contract, and he's getting to keep, in, in the case of these calls here, 30 cents per contract out of the money. Now, you may think that's not a lot, but you know, multiply that by 382 and you know or or even better if, if you're a skilled level one player you'd sell in the money and these mofos are getting 128 per contract up front that means if this closes underneath ten dollars by this expiration date you get zitta zip 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 nothing and they get to keep it all that's the game that's why you buy in the money and it eliminates one entire factor from you profiting or not profiting. When you buy in the money, you only have to get the direction right. And if you only have to get the direction right, buy when the RSI is oversold. You know that this is going to come down. It fucking has to. There is no question. The only question is when. Now, that's when OTM comes into play. Because if you're if you're not in the money and you're and you're out of the money, not only do you have to get the win correct and fast like and, and like very quickly do you have to get it correct but you know you also have time time is not something you want to fuck with in options especially if you don't have to the second you go out of the money time will eat the ass of your contracts faster than you will ever know so i may mean, i get it they're cheaper but the best deal is not always the cheapest price. In the money, you have theta protection, which is very beneficial. Because as long as you're in the money, time will not eat away as badly. Now, how do we know this? Well, we can look at theta. Is theta lower for puts in the money or out of the money? It's lower in the money. Because, again, less factor because you have more intrinsic value. So whenever you look at this options trainer, I don't know how your broker set up, but Weeble, if you see this blue shaded region, this is your theta shield for calls. If you see this blue shaded region, this is your theta shield for puts. Your exit strategy is if you get pushed out of the money, get the fuck out and try something else. It's better than sitting there holding contracts out of the money where you lose everything. Now another thing about out of the money, how they trick you. So let's say we buy 10 contracts at 0 0.05 per contract. That's gonna cost you $50, right? 10 times 0 0.05 is gonna be 50, because 0 0.05 times 100, which you know, it's 100 per contract, is five and then times 10, the amount of contracts you bought is 50. Now your average is 0 0.05. What happens if that ticks down to 0 0.04? You just lost 20 fucking percent of your investment off of a one penny move. Now, is that to say that out of the money is not a profitable strategy? Of course it is. You just have to know when to buy it. You have to get it, like I said, direction and time correct. Because the more time you're wrong out of the money and you're sitting there out of the money, you will be losing money at a rapid rate. Now, 0 0.05. Yes, it's a cheap contract, but you will lose 20% per cent guaranteed. Or you could gain 20% per cent guaranteed. But in order for you to gain 20%, you have to have the stock going up. If it goes up and then it stalls, you're not going to make money. In the, if, if, if you're in the money and it goes up, stalls, goes up, stalls, goes up, stalls, 
you're going to keep growing profits. That's how it works. Now, another thing, decision making. If you buy a contract on a monthly expiring contract and it's day one of the cycle, like for example, it's, it's June 25th. If you're sitting on contracts that expire on July 15th, you should not even be concerned about any fucking thing as long as you're in the money and the stock hasn't shit itself. That's the only thing you got to worry about. Because again, if the RSI is still overbroken, or if it's still broken, and you're still in the money, <laughs> stay the course, you're good to go. So again, you're getting in your own way. That's number one. And a few other things to go for. I, I end this one. Never buy the fucking ask. Ever. Never do a market order. Ever with options. Because again, you are paying a premium for the contract. And especially don't do that if you're out of the money. But just don't buy the ask. The ask, what I recommend doing is push it out of your screen like that. Like it doesn't exist. Always buy between the bid and the mid. Always. Always. You always want to lowball your bid offers. Now, not too much because you don't want to miss out on things, but try to keep it between the bid and the mid. Pay a modest price. Don't overpay. There's no point to slap the ask with options. You're paying a premium. Now, I want to go back to this example where if you know the the lower your average is, the more correct you have to be. So the cheaper the the stock or the cheaper the option is, the faster you're going to lose money, especially out of the money. That's how they get you. Now if you're in the money, yes. Okay, this one costs, let's just say we get the we get the mid price, 172. What happens if that goes down one penny? You don't lose fucking nearly as much. And you have intrinsic value. That's the game. It's all a big mind game. It's all psychological. The trading itself is fucking easy. Wait till the RSI gets here. Buy puts. Wait till the RSI gets down here. Buy calls. Wait till the RSI gets up here. Buy puts again. And this works. We've been doing it for six to seven months now. 85% of the time, there's nothing else needed. Nothing else. In the money. Broken RSI, upside, downside and patience and discipline. That is literally all you need and this is going to be possible in this environment for the next eight months while the shit storm fixes itself or makes itself worse or what have you. But that's the thing, irrespective of SPY and all the popular you know, cookie cutter mainstream tickers that everyone plays because no one can think for themselves, fuck all that shit. That's where they're getting your money. If you wanna make money, Come to Illiquidia, baby. That's what it all is at. Because guess what? I fucking know, if I look at fold, I fucking know that gaps are resistance. And this motherfucker just hit resistance and the RSI is oversold and no one's in it. And I think this was a freebie for everyone today. Now, don't buy out of the money. Again, it's a trap. Buy in the money. In the money. Intrinsic value, man. It is good for you and your contracts, okay? And, I mean, you just got to remember, if you see a lot of strikes, it's a weekly setup. If it's a weekly setup, there's more liquidity. If there's more liquidity, there's more options. If there's more options, there's more ways to fuck you. You want to play illiquid, in the money, with broken RSI, you cannot lose. But only 15% of the time based on my personal traits. So anyways, that's all I have. My kids are home. They're about to get loud. Um, hopefully this helped. And oh yeah, make sure you have all the strike prices on. But yeah, I mean, options, it's just movement. Look at this. This is how many times you get a profit in off of this one chart. What's the ticker name? Who gives a fuck? It doesn't matter. Pick an RSI. Look at it. Is it oversold? Is it overbought? Badass. I know it's going to go the other way. And when it, when it does, I better have some calls or puts open depending on which way it is, and you'll make money. It's as simple as that, folks. Paper trade it. Try it. Paper trading exists. Go buy 10 fucking random RSI that are overbought or oversold tickers, buy them a few weeks out, and sit and wait, check them back in three weeks, and tell me I'm not crazy. Have a good one.